Welcome to episode four of Biology 2402 Lab, uh, featuring the pancreas. Yay! Um, so here we see a couple of images of the pancreas. This model on the left uh, shows it kind of rotated, but there is a uh, interest. This duct right here, by the way, this thing that I'm kind of surrounding here, that's the tube that takes the exocrine product. Um, to the duodenum, to the stomach, so, or to the uh, small intestine. So we'll deal with that uh, later. But moving on to the exo, sorry, endocrine function, uh, there are structures called pancreatic islets, and I'm kind of circling them right here, which are noticeably lighter colored than the surrounding acinar cells. Those pancreatic islets, or islets of Langerhans, and it's pronounced islet, right? It's not island, so it's not islet. So the islet, the pancreatic islets, uh, produce a couple of different hormones, which I'll detail here shortly. And over here on the rat, on the right, I'm going to circle the circle of red in red. So there, that center of that big blob, X marks the spot, is the pancreas. So you find it uh, tucked underneath the stomach in this mesentery, which is this uh, sheet-like membrane that supports the intestines and spleen and so on. And... Uh, it's the only one in there. So if you see like a smeared looking, chewing gum looking thing, that's kind of what it looks like to me. Uh, that is the pancreas. So moving on to the different hormones. So glucagon and insulin. Glucagon is produced by the islets in cells called alpha cells. Uh, pretty much exclusively targets the liver. Now here goes some complicated sounding terms. Gluconeogenesis, which I think I've talked about before, is making new sugar. Glycogenolysis. Glycogen oolysis. So what, what is that? Well, lysis is to split something. Glycogen is a complex carbohydrate, which when you break it up, results in the product, in, in, uh, in glucose. Glucose is the monomer. So when you glycogenolysis, you break up glycogen, you get glucose. And then lipolysis is breaking down a fat. You can break down fat into a lot of different compounds and then you can build those into sugar. All three of these things lead to more sugar than you had, so it raises blood sugar levels. Uh, it is an antagonist to insulin, which lowers blood sugar, and there's a way to remember what glucagon does, and there it is. If your glucose is gone, get glucagon. All right, that's the marketing uh, campaign for it. If you, if you have too much glucagon, you're gonna have too much sugar, and that's what you call hyperglycemia. Hyper means a lot of or too much of, and glycemia in, in, implies sugar. We go to insulin, which you've all heard of. This is produced by beta cells. So you don't have to recognize alpha and beta cells in an image. Uh, I can't, so just know that they what their jobs are. Now, insulin targets a lot more. Uh, you'll see listed there, and you see a couple of new words now, and they look kind of similar. You better get them in your heads, because if you ask for a function, you better uh, be able to tell me about it. So glycogenesis. Glycogen, this is a contraction of a word. It should be glycogen genesis, really. So glycogen genesis is the genesis of glycogen. And if you're making glycogen out of sugar, you're removing the sugar that you're making the glycogen out of. So you lower the blood sugar. Uh, lipogenesis is making fat. and You can turn sugar into fat pretty easily. If you have a 100% sugar diet and you eat 5,000 calories a day, you're gonna make fat and you're going to have malnutrition. Um, famous uh, infamous disorder resulting from a number of insulin-related issues is diabetes mellitus, and this is your type 1, type 2 diabetes. Uh, we won't get into it here, but they uh, can be anything from an autoimmune disorder to a, a dietary-caused uh, issue. All right, moving on. Don't forget to study the photos and videos that I made in the module.